Hey everyone, it's Michael with Color Cubic, and we're back again with the fifth and final installment of our 3D packaging tutorial. Now in our last video, we had just finished assigning Expresso tags and controls to all of the individual components of our package, and we compiled all of those controls in one central location called Master Control, as you can see here. Then we took it a step further and compiled all of these controls into one controller called Supreme Controller, so it's just one slider essentially. So in this video, what we'll be doing is we're going to adjust some of the parameters of our package to fix some of these weird intersections that are occurring with some of the components of our package. So for those of you who uh, you know care about the quality of your work, you know this isn't really acceptable. We can do a quick RAM preview and uh, see how this is actually rendering. And you can do that if you're on a Mac by Command R. If you're on a PC, Control R. So as you can see, some of these folds are intersecting with some of the other folds and you know that's not really going to work for us so let's go ahead and fix that it's actually a pretty easy fix so there's an expresso tag assigned to our master control null object and this is essentially where we'll make all of those changes so if you just double click that expresso tag you can see here all of the parameters that are controlling our package are located here so i'm just going to drag this down a little bit and all of these parameters actually have a range mapper assigned to them. So let's go ahead and just let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit because they're currently they're all overlapping each other and we don't really want that to we don't want that to happen. So we can just drag all of these out. Just so they're a little easier to access. Okay. And I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. All right. Now, with our perspective window here, I'm just going to drag this over so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to shrink my Expresso, my Expresso window. And right away, I can tell this fold right here that's intersecting with our left, our left panel fold. This is the back fold too, which is located right here. So with our range mapper selected. I'm going to come down here to our input upper value, which currently is at 100%. Now, this value point is controlling where this fold will, will essentially land when our supreme controller is at 25%. So as you can see, 100% is intersecting with the fold of our left panel. And so we can just adjust this if we just bring this down to like 98%. So as you can see, that solved the problem. But we have to fix this in a few other places too. So as you can see, the top folds here, it's happening there, and most likely it's happening on the bottom, and on the back as well. So here and here. So let's go ahead and just adjust these. And uh, once we're done, we can do a quick RAM preview. And uh, yeah, it should solve that problem. So right away I can tell that this is the left top fold and the right top fold. So we just need to find those here. So here's the left top fold, and we want the range mapper assigned to that. So we'll come down to the input upper uh, value point, and we're going to change that to 98%. And now we're going to go to the right top fold, which is right here. And this is the range mapper assigned to that. You know, just follow the line. And with the range mapper selected, we're going to change the value point of this to 98%. And now we need to do the left bottom fold and the right bottom fold. So let's do the, let's focus on the left bottom fold first. So with the range mapper selected, I'm going to adjust this value point to 98%. And now with the right bottom fold range mapper selected, I'm going to change that to 98% too. So we can can just look at this real fast and I don't see those intersections happening. So now let's work on the back. And now we know that this is top fold 2 and bottom fold 2. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Here's the range mapper for top fold 2. And in our input upper value point, I'm going to change this to 98%. And I'm going to do the same to our bottom fold 2. 
going to change the input upper value to 98%. And now I can just close out of this. Let's drag this over and rotate this. We can do a quick RAM preview to see if we're still experiencing those weird intersections. So if you're on a Mac, you want to do Command R. If you're on a PC, Control R. Now, I don't have any proper lighting in my scene, so this isn't going to look the greatest, but um, just for a quick preview, I can already see that we're not getting those weird intersections. So that solves that problem. So now that we're done with that, let's move on to adding some thickness to our package. Now, for some of you, you may not care about adding thickness to the package, and this might be good enough. But for those of you who want to add thickness to this, uh, you know, if you're interested in making this a little more realistic, there's a really good way to do that. And uh, we can do that by assigning a, uh, a cloth surface nerve to our master control null object. So with our master control null object selected, let's come up here to simulate and cloth. And now with our alt option key held, let's select cloth surface. And what that'll do is that'll nest our master control null object in our cloth surface nerd. So now, if we select our cloth surface nerd, we come down here to object, we can adjust the thickness of this. So before we do that, though, let's just go ahead and zoom in so we can kind of see what's happening. So you can adjust it so it's either a negative or positive value. Now, I'm going to adjust it so uh, it's a positive value just to see what's occurring. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, we're getting some edges. We're getting some... Uh, what looks like beveled edges. And that's fine. Um, this, this is totally acceptable, but if you want to work with a negative value point of our cloth surface, it can get a little bit tricky because now you're dealing with some intersections. Now, um, if you're just going to be animating this and you're not going to be doing a whole lot of close-ups, you could just leave it as it is and it, you know, it should be fine. But, uh, you know, if you're going to have a lot of close-ups and, um, you know, you're going to be focusing on details, you might need to adjust some of the, uh, some of the individual components of the package so that they're not intersecting. And so that can get a little more complicated, but, um, I'm not really going to touch on that in this video just because, uh, you essentially would just need to go to each individual component and move, move that component slightly. So as you can see here, uh, you know, I did this on purpose. I just moved this left uh, or the right bottom fold, and you can move that out. So you can make adjustments to this and, uh, you know, still have the controller control all of the components of the package. But um, for the sake of just, you know, adding some thickness to this and not, you know, spending too much time on this, I'm just going to increase the thickness in a positive value. And now if we do a quick RAM preview, you can see, you know, we have some thickness to our package. You know, it looks pretty good. So that's it. So if we come back here to our Supreme Controller, we can zero this out. And, you know, our package is still retained the way it's supposed to look. And let's go ahead and just make this 25%. And it assembles properly. And we're not getting any weird intersections. So. Now I can show you real quick before we end this video, I'm going to show you how to animate this. So right now we're at zero frames on our timeline. So with our Supreme Controller here, located in our Supreme Controller null object, go ahead and right click this, animation, add keyframe. And now let's go ahead and just uh, jump ahead to, let's just say 100 frames. And now Let's go ahead and zero this out. And now right click this again. Animation, add keyframe. And now let's start back at the beginning and just click the play forward. Now you can see our package is unfolding. So you can animate those parameters. You know, and if you don't want that to be at, uh, if you don't want that to be at, you know, 100 frames, you can always adjust, adjust this bring that down to say like 30 frames so it opens faster. And let's go ahead and try that again. There we go. 
So that's just to give you an idea of what you can achieve by, uh, you know, animating this as well. But uh, essentially, that's this concludes our uh, our tutorial series for a three D packaging tutorial. So hopefully, you enjoyed this tutorial series. Uh, I know that you know it was pretty tedious, and there's a lot of details involved. So that's why I tried to break this up into five videos. But uh, if you did enjoy it, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about how we achieved this, or if you got lost or anything's not working for you, uh, you know, go ahead and leave your questions or comments in the comments section, and I'll be sure to reply to you as promptly as I can. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back later with a few different tutorials. Talk to you soon.